What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another initial reactions video. And unfortunately, the final initial reactions video of the 2023-24 NFL season. A 14-6 final record for the season. 20 games played, which as a Lions fan, I am grateful that I was able to witness 20 games this season. And as hurt you are, especially once you lose any of those six losses we took this season, man, did they hurt at the time. But I still personally do get a lot of joy just in watching this team play, man. Just seeing who steps up, the growth. It's fun watching these dudes, man. It's fun watching just the growth of players individually, the growth as a team, just all the big plays, good and bad, the emotions of it. It's always a ton of fun. And today, while it's kind of like not your original initial reactions, it is on this channel. I have done my first rewatch, though I was flying through it to get prepared for a Bleacher Report show, which, by the way, definitely go check out. We, we threw some clips in there. We may actually throw more clips in that one than we will in this video. But we're going to discuss this Lions 31-34 loss to San Fran in the NFC Championship game, so let's get it started. Welcome, ready right to a video. Glad you guys are here, and yes, man, we are back with another one of these videos, man. And like I said, this, unfortunately, is going to be the last one of the season, and it is now, it's now drafted free agency time, which I'm excited to dive into because I'm I'm kind of behind on the draft stuff, so I got a lot of making up ground to do, and I'm also glad that I'm doing this on a Monday because if I was doing this yesterday, this would probably be a disaster. I mean, it probably would be. It still hurts. I'm going to be honest. I don't know about y'all. It was hard for me to sleep last night. It just was. All right? One, the room was hot. But, you know, it's not just that. It was the fact that sometimes you kind of keep waking up while you're trying to fall asleep. So you fall asleep, then you wake up. You fall asleep, you wake back up. Like, you know how that happens? Well, in between, every time I'd fall back asleep, I would dream about this game. I would, I just, I couldn't, I don't even know if I was dreaming or of how I was half awake. I don't know what the heck was going on. But I could not stop thinking about this game rather that was doing a video for it I was like picturing myself doing the video the reaction video or whether that was just watching the game and being disappointed in the loss like this one stung and it was really difficult last night it's difficult today it's difficult because it's the last one it is man this, the NFL season's too short like I said I'm grateful I was able to watch 20 games and it pushed us further into the offseason than it usually does that's amazing in and of itself but man the NFL season just it, it flies by it, it just feels like yesterday we were at training camp man and that process is going to restart and begin again which I, I love doing it I, I really do the excitement but man it's just too darn short. Like, that's that's the thing that hurts me most right now is to think that we're done with this team. And obviously, you know, we got a lot of core pieces, and we'll talk about that, and I'm excited about the future and all of those things, the young players, the the, the next year step that you're hoping from a lot of guys. But at the same time, man, this was a this was a heck of a team to watch. And obviously, we had strengths. We had weaknesses. Every player, first off, just want to give a big thank you to all the players on this team, man, for making it a super enjoyable season. As we signed to the practice squad, the excitement we added a piece, the trade we made at the deadline, like there was just so much fun that this season had in store for us as Lions fan. And for me, I, I really don't, I don't know. I don't have words for it. It's difficult. It's difficult, man, because like I said, the season's too short. It's just, it's all the anticipation for the season. And then it just feels like it takes three days and, and the season's over. And you're flying through weeks. You're not thinking about it, doing your reaction videos. And once it's over, it finally settles in like, dang. It's the off season, so I don't know. That's that's the biggest part that hurts me more than even just losing this football game. If it was week nine and we lost, I'd be upset. But I'm like, hey, we got next week. It's just tough that we don't. It's tough that we don't, man. And we know there's going to be changes. Coaching staff, we'll see on that one. I assume Ben Johnson's going to get a spot. I'm not sure there, but we'll see on that. We have great coaches. I think they deserve an opportunity. Great assistant coaches. You know, certain players, whether they're expiring on their contracts or you know whether they're just not here next next year for whatever reason. We we'll have new players incoming, man. It's going to be a different looking team. I think we have a lot of core pieces. We know what a lot of the core pieces are, and I'm very excited about that. It's why, why I'm very confident about the future. But, man, like I said, just shout out to everybody that was a part of this. It was a lot of fun this year, man. And as a Lions fan, I appreciate what you guys put on the field, man, because it was a lot of fun to watch. And uh, I hate it had to end that way, but at some point, you know, all good things come to an end, man. It was going to end regardless. It was going to end regardless at some point. I would have been sad if it would end in the Super Bowl. I would have been sad, too, because the season's over, man. I love doing this. So with that, let's start to talk about this game. Man, this is going to be a tough transition. Let's start to talk about this game. Oh, boy. It's hurting, man. Y'all don't I, – I mean, I know you guys feel it too. It just hurts more the next day because in the day of, it's the moment you're more about focus on the game. But, bro, to know the season's over is tough. Uh, you guys may have seen the clip 
on Bleacher Report. We were live yesterday. Thank you, Bleacher Report. Want to give a shout-out to them, man. They hooked us up this week. We did a live show over there. Shout-out to Speakeasy. Shout-out to Dose of Dad. Shout-out to the production crew, man. They did an excellent job over there, man. That was incredible. That was incredible. I couldn't even imagine how awesome that was going to be. I mean, that thing was in incredible. Shout-out to Stick, man. I mean, that, that whole setup was just amazing. That opportunity was amazing. And uh, hopefully we get to do something like that in the future again. Shout out to all of you that have rocked with us through this entire season. But also rocked with us last night, man. We're in the chat. Typically speaking to this game for the Lions, man, what are my takeaways from this game individually? Well, like I said, you may have seen the Bleacher Report clip, you know, that, that was kind of there after the post game. I mean, it's it's doing some numbers on, on X right now, which is crazy. But it is, man. So, again, shout out to Bleacher Report. Shout out to Easy for that. But um, you may have seen that clip, my kind of a reaction. Obviously, the talk's always going to be about the fourth down calls. I mean, that's always what it comes down to. And that's just also the nature of the sport, right? It's not the NBA. It's not a series. You play one game, right? And, and whether it's coming down to one play, one decision, you can point to a lot of plays outside of the decisions on the field goals. And obviously I defended that like I have all season long in terms of the decision making. That doesn't necessarily mean that I would have done exactly what Dan Campbell did in the same spot. But what I am saying is I'm not going to question his aggressiveness in those decision making. And here's really the overall point of why they say that. First off, again, understanding that this one is a fourth down so it has a different feel to it. I still look at this similarly to, I mean, let's just say even the playoffs and what's happened earlier in this playoffs, right? When no one questioned against Tampa Bay when we were throwing the football because we ended up winning that football game. Or against the LA Rams, no one sat there and questioned why the Lions throw the ball on, you know, second down twice when we're trying to run out the clock. What are we doing? Because it worked, right? And I understand it's different. It's a fourth down. It's about adding points. I understand that it's different. But to me, it's not too different because I don't think the two decisions that they made were that different because I think the two decisions that they made were within the game plan, right? Obviously, the first one that you had where the Lions in a 24-10 to 10 game had an opportunity to take a field goal. That's one of those spots where it was about execution, and we know that it comes down to usually, like, schematically, what do you do out there, what's the play call, and then how do you execute it? Like, like it can always be that balance, and for the Lions, at the play call, they had the guy open, they executed to the point of not coming up with a football on the reception, just not connecting, not making the grab for Josh Reynolds. So, to me, again, like, while you can question that decision, if we go out there, we kick a field goal, we miss the field goal, again, it just comes back to execution. It wasn't a lack of preparation, we just didn't execute on on that play and again to me that's no different in to my in, in my eyes than like the LA Rams game for example we're throwing on second down because it wasn't like the Lions just decided towards the end of that game like let's get aggressive and close this game out though that may be the perception what the Lions did to end that game throwing the ball on second down was what their game plan was coming into the game it was hey we're gonna throw in early downs they just didn't go away from it now the first one I think I kind of just simplified up to this they had a play they felt comfortable about they felt comfortable about the look they were gonna get and they ran the play and it was there you just need to execute right you also flip it back and look it was a it was a pretty long field goal I understand that you know statistically he's been pretty good from in that range but it wasn't the shortest field goal ever we saw Jake Moody miss one and then the second fourth down attempt that the Lions went for like that was a spot where the Lions could have tried to tie the football game and again I'm not saying I wouldn't have done this but I don't question these necessarily and for that one specifically their decision to go for it there obviously I point more of that not as much to execution outside of kind of the the blown blocks in the interior with the little stunt that they had ran between Frank Ragnow and KO'd when Frank Ragnall went on the ground there and they gave up the quick pressure, but it was also that San Fran did a great job of understanding that their tendency was to do a certain thing in those spots, and the Lions had a specific beater for a specific coverage, yet Tampa Bay dropped out. They went to zone coverage. They took away, you could see all the reads from the All-22 view. There was nothing there. Tied along with the pressure in the interior, tried to extend the play, and there was just simply nothing there for the Lions. That one, however, I can understand that if you looked at it from a game plan, perspective right if you look at it from a game plan perspective how the Lions would say that this in their eyes made sense right as Dan Campbell said after the game he didn't want to play the long game with them so that's how he felt coming into this game I can understand saying we don't want to just take a field goal try to tie this football game and give it back to them because they're bleeding the clock we know that they're a completely different team when they can play tied or with the lead the run game stays available to them and all of a sudden it's completely different And if they go down and get a field goal and you're getting it with just a little bit of time left and obviously it's, a, it's still not a terrible situation but I understand why the Lions don't want to live there. They feel like they had some rolling first down that they can absolutely convert, and the Lions felt like they had to play. Give credit to San Fran in that spot, but I also think the fact that they decided to kick the field goal before half tells you that it's not just Dan Campbell is like 
We've said this before. Dan Campbell doesn't go for nine every fourth down. All right, that's just not true. He doesn't. Right? He does it based on to me what the feel is, but also I think a lot of it does come back to what the game plan is coming in. And in that spot, the difference is right. It's like, well, why didn't they go for it there? Lions took the field goal to go up three scores. Right? So it's a lot different when you have a three score opportunity lead versus a two score opportunity lead versus if the Lions were looking at it from a game plan side of, hey, look, man, we're only down three. We're moving the football here. We want to punch the ball into the end zone. So again, I'm not saying I would have made the same decisions. But I'm also not going to completely question them. And look, man, like I said, execution versus scheme or decision making. The Lions, to me, the best way that I think I could summarize this loss, in my opinion, because I always try to kind of simplify it down in these videos to like one or just a few things, the best way that I can, right? I think that's like a lot of times the best way to do it is can you really group these things together in terms of this was the issue? And this one was difficult because it wasn't just a sense of, man, they were just young. Oh, man, they were just young players making mistakes. That was part of it. But that wasn't just the only thing that took place. It wasn't also just a lack of playoff experience. I don't believe that either in this one, right? Maybe people will point to Dan Campbell's decision-making. Lack of playoff experience. I don't agree with that. We won two playoff games with his decision-making as we just outlined there. So, again, I don't necessarily agree with that. Plus, he's been, not as a head coach, but he's also been in the playoffs as an assistant coach. Then you also look at, okay, well, was it just – the veterans, no, it wasn't just the veterans, but the veterans were a part of it. Those guys didn't come through at points in time. I don't think you could just simplify it down to one thing in this game outside of this because it wasn't necessarily penalties that beat us either. It wasn't the weather that beat us. Beat us. It wasn't, to me, just a lack of not having experience as, as a full sense. Maybe for some players, maybe a little bit. But to me, the best way I think I can simplify this one after doing my initial rewatch is saying that the Lions just needed that one big play. They just needed someone to make a big play because all year long the talk has been, and it's not like the Lions haven't lost football games this season, right? It happens. We've lost football games this season. And what the Lions, to me, I think they needed, offensively, defensively, special teams, they needed someone to come through and just make a big play. That is how they needed to shift the momentum in this game. Offense, defense, special teams, someone had to make a key play. It's not, not necessarily saying it had to be like a broken play, but maybe something that's like, hey, here's the design, but he went above and beyond and made this happen. All right, Maybe the ball bounced the right way. Maybe, maybe you make a ridiculous grab or you break an extra tackle or you make a stop in space. Like We needed some big special play in this game, and it just didn't feel like we were able to grab that from anywhere in this game to pull the momentum back in our side. That's really the key takeaway that I have because there are so so many examples that we can point to in this game. And obviously the first half was really strong for the Lions up 24 to 7 at that time. I was feeling really good. I think a lot of things that we talked about in the preview slash prediction we saw take place in the first half. Oh, as always, man, of course, I got to give a shout out to our partner that was our partner for this entire NFL season at Bet US, man. And also I want to give a thank you to anybody that supported Bet US, man. If you supported Bet US, you're also supporting me, and I do appreciate that. Bet US. The fun doesn't end here just because the offseason has started as a Lions fan. Of course, you could still bet on things like the Super Bowl, and you can build your props out that way as well. And on the left side of the screen here, you can see this is their website, so make sure you click that top link in the description. You deposit at least $100 as a first-time user. You get a 125% match up to $2,500. So take advantage of that opportunity. They also have promotions. So if you already were a customer, check there for re-ups and different options there. They have a ton of promotions that are available. If you're only betting on the Lions, it doesn't end here. They also, of course, have NFL draft bets as well. You have your NFL futures. So if you want to look into the futures betting, but you also have the NFL draft bets like this, for example, who is the first overall pick? So this is a spot to absolutely stay involved here with BetUS. As I said, all the sports on the left side, basketball of course, is really in season right now. We have March Madness on the way, so definitely check that out. And then on the top of your screen, there's a lot of different options too. So if you're not just into sports betting, maybe you're into casino games and you're like, hey man, I want to play some online casino games. This is your spot to do that as well here. They also have a race book option as well. It's live betting and this would be great for the Super Bowl because the lines will change as the game goes on. And as you can see right here, the casino game site as well. And if you start making best with BetUS, you'll be thrown into their loyalty program, and there you can earn some awesome perks and rewards by just making bets with BetUS. If you want to learn more about that, check out their website. You can really see how that all works, man. If you have any questions, they're great with customer service. They have an FAQ page, and it's very easy to get in contact, email, cell phone, very easy to get in contact with BetUS. So again, use that top link in the description. Shout out to BetUS. Appreciate y'all. 
Let's get back to the video. From the offensive side of the ball, we saw a lot of things that we kind of expected. The outside rushing attack, the pin pull looks. Heck, even some wrinkles there with Ben Johnson. I, I wasn't even expecting that. The counter pitch plays that the Lions ran with Penny Sewell. We are getting him out a lot in space in this game. Passing the football. The Lions, obviously, schematically, we could see what they wanted to do. Saw a lot of kind of the boot action. We saw a lot of the tight end flats. We saw a lot of moving the offensive line, as well as a lot of the willingness to take the level one throws, the delays on the play, the chip curls on the play, the running back underneath. And and that's the thing that was like, hey, this seems pretty obvious, but it feels like the Lions can have success here because they're they're comfortable doing this offensively. And they had success doing that. It, it wasn't like, you know, consistently the big play that was like stretching the field. It was the Lions were methodically moving the ball. The run scheme was very flexible in this game. Even in the second half, that's not to say every run was perfect, but even in the second half, while we had some that were shut down, we also even saw some duo looks, right, inside rushing. And I thought for the Lions in this one, though the outside rushing attack would be there, I thought for them in this one, some of the ability to move, get movement on outside zone rushing attacks, specifically behind Graham Glasgow, who laid some key blocks in this game. Him and Taylor Decker did really well as well in this one. I thought the Lions would get movement there, and they were. Like, like a lot of the things offensively that you were hoping that was going to hit, I thought a lot of things hit that we talked about. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Lions did a nice job. The one thing that kind of threw me off was some of the blitzing that the Lions utilized. I didn't expect Aaron Glenn to maybe be that aggressive, but at the same time, that's who he's been all year, so I guess I can't say I'm shocked there. And to be honest, it's not like that situation seemingly killed them in this game was them bringing the blitz. They actually had some positive on it. Yes, they gave up some plays. Some of it they didn't execute if he missing the sack. At the same time, they also had some success blitzing as well. So I'll give them some credit for that because I wasn't expecting it. They did rotate between cover three, cover four a lot on first down. Another thing that we talked about coming in. And then again, another thing that I like schematically defensively was some of the aggressive depth. You know, we didn't give up multiple speed out routes. We didn't just give them that. And one of my hopes for confidence was is that Cam Sutton could be a little bit more natural in this game like he's natural in off coverage and I thought that we so we saw that that's not to say he had the perfect day but I'll be honest I think Cam Sutton played his best day in coverage in this game and I know people will hate on that it's it's easy to hate on everything right now but by my count he gave up like two receptions on five targets one of them was the touchdown where he was supposed to have inside help he got beat but he was supposed to have inside help by CD Deuce and I thought he was a step late to help out there and he gave up you know the inside breaking route you give up the touchdown on the play and it was nice he was between two defenders but I was like CD Deuce you got to help us you're the inside help there he's playing outside leverage and they hit the tight windows so I thought he played a really strong game and then Kendall Vilder again not perfect right give the shot play but that was one of those spots where that's like man that's just a bounce of the ball in a one playoff game those kind of things could be the difference, and it was a huge reason for them to get back into this one. I thought he tackled well. I, I would have liked to see Sutton a little bit better, I think, against the run, but both of them played the screens well. He gave up the one shot play Kendall Vilder did, but he supported against the run, and man, I kind of feel bad for Kendall Vilder, man. It feels like he's just this close all the time. Every playoff game, it seems like he's had a play that's like right there, and just by a little bit he misses, then it's a big play. Like the Elliott Rams, where he just misses, it's a big play touchdown. This one, he just missed. I mean, it hit him off the head. It was like, yo, you're in a great spot. It hits him in the head. And the ball bounces off, and somehow the dude catches it. It was like, what the heck? The, the Dallas game, right? Broken play. Guy falls down. Big play. It's like, yo, what the heck? He's right there. He's in face, and then big play. So, you know, you, you feel for those guys. But honestly, I thought a lot of things obviously schematically went well in the first half. And there were some things for the whole game that I thought went well, like in terms of protecting the football. Now the fumble, but as a passing attack, right, taking care of the ball. When we got sacked, we had some breakdowns in pass protection that we saw, but still taking care of the football, not fumbling from golf, not putting it in a harm's way past the football, understanding the importance of protecting the ball in this game and that their drives were going to be a little bit more methodical willingness to, to live underneath in this game none of the trick plays we tried actually worked in this game which even more so speaks to the way that they were disciplined outside of the fumble a lot of discipline offensively also side note I will give credit to uh, the officials in this sense and maybe it was more of a team thing or how the teams played they didn't make themselves a big part of this game. And I guess there's points where you can say, like, oh, that should have been a hold, that kind of thing. And, you know, watching back, like, the Romeo one at the end, I would have loved for a holding call there. But I can't hate on the fact that they let the guys play for pretty much the majority of the game. I do appreciate that as a fan. That those guys didn't seem like a factor at all. And I can rock with it. I can rock with it leaving it out there to the players, just letting those guys play. And it felt like that pretty much for the entire game. So I thought a lot of things that we talked about kind of came up in the first half. And then it was the second half. It was like, okay, that's where the momentum started to shift. And it's not to say the second half was terrible for the Lions. I mean, even the first drive, they went down and scored. Credit to them. They came out, had a coverage beater, got a big shot play. They understood when we were playing cover three, got a shot play out of it, beat our coverage, and then the defense stood up. 
they made a big play. Josh Pascal made a big stop. A young guy came through. Lions forced a field goal. And yeah, you gave up points, but it was like, okay, I'll take that. And then offense gets back out there. I'm moving the ball. It's like, hey, here we go again. Moving the ball well. You see immediately, okay, a little boot. Let's let's get it into the flat. And you're like, yes, we're moving the ball again. Run game still there. The outside zone was successful. You get the pin pull mixed in a little bit. You get another counter run. Ultimately, as we know, the drive got halted by a fourth down stop there. But the Lions moved the ball well. And as, you know, for kind of like a rule of thumb for me, is when I'm watching these games and I, and I sit there and I watch it, I feel comfortable in terms of they're moving the ball well or they're getting stops defensively. It took like that one crazy play. I usually feel good about our team. And the weird thing is, is like I felt like that in this game because that's what happened. But at the same time, it just happened too many times because at some point you expect like we're going to make a splash play. Something's going to bounce itself out. And that's why I say we just never had that one big play in the second half. We just didn't seem to ever get that from anywhere. It was like we just didn't get that one crucial stop. And I, I'll show some different examples, but, you know, there, right, you're moving the ball. You missed a shot play. Golf puts too much on it, misses it to Laporta, right? And good job by Greenlaw to get back into the play. But they have him trailing. Great timing with the play fake. Then, of course, you know, you get back into it. You try to run it on third down. You hand off to St. Brown. He gets two yards on the play. You don't get up to the second level. Their linebackers are really good. And you have a play there. You just don't connect. You don't hold on to the football. Defense gets back on the field. And, of course, it's Brandon Ayuk who just makes a ridiculous play off the tip. Again, was that something? Then I'm like, yo, we are just lost here. Like, no, we we didn't beat ourselves. He just made a ridiculous play. And then it was like, all right, well, we'll defense, hold up in the red zone. That's been the key to the playoffs. And they did up until third down. And he had him back at the eight yard line. And it's like, they, they're throwing the ball on third and goal. So the fact that they're throwing down on third and goal usually gives me the sense that they were probably going to take the field goal if they didn't get this. Because they were throwing it from the eight-yard line. And, again, credit to Purdy, but at the same time, I thought C.D. Deuce was just late. Sutton also got beat pretty quickly inside there, but C.D. Deuce a little bit late, I thought, on the play. You give up the touchdown. So it's like, okay, at some point in a lot of our wins this year, it's wit like this. And you can look at tons of different examples just to kind of throw some out there, right, because a lot of games come down to one play. If this was week eight, we're upset, but we're like, yo, we played them really well, right? And it's easy, like, for me to feel like not only did we prove that, yeah, we can compete with these guys that we're with the big, we're with the big boys, at least this season we were, but it's also like, oh, I, I couldn't help but feel like I, we were the better football team. I, I mean, I rewatched it thinking that, like, man, okay, there, it's going to be worse than I thought. Like I always say, it's never as good as you think. It's never as bad as you thought either, right, when you rewatch it. I was expecting to see more bad, and I watched it, and I'm like, yo, there was not a point of the rewatch where I was like, oh, we're going to lose this football game. I was like, I'm rewatching. I know we lost. I didn't feel like we were going to lose the game. Yet we just couldn't get like one big play. It felt like at any, it just, it just didn't come through, and it did for them. And we just didn't have it. And and you know what? The first half had that too for San Fran. We just needed one big play. It felt like in the second half, we just could not get it on any phase of the game, offense, defense, or special teams. And when you look throughout the year. Out of the close games, whether it's L.A. Chargers, it was the offense, right? It was Sam Laporta who came through, picks up a big, you know, first down. We go for it. Then we kick the field goal so we can end the football game. You look at New Orleans, it's Josh Reynolds who comes through in that game. Minnesota, it's Ify Melifonwu, the seat of the division after giving up a big play. And that was like the perfect example because it was the sways. It was the momentum drops. They're only down by six. They picked up a third and 19. And then it was Ify who was like, no, stop all that. We're getting a stop defensively. You can look at Kansas City to begin the year, right? It was like defense comes up with a stop. And it was C.D. Deuce, multiple plays on their final possession. You look at Chicago, the offensively, it was David Montgomery, right? Pass game and rushing the football. So we've just found ways all season long. And usually you can point to a specific player or a play. And we just didn't feel like we were able to get that in the second half. And, and this is where it was like, even here, like I didn't feel like the game was over. But it was such of like a take the wind out of your sail because, yeah, you get that big play by San Fran. It's like, okay, here's where we need to respond. And this is where you get one of those, you know, young breakdowns, right, where Gibbs seemingly was going the wrong way. You do a trap, which we, as we talked about coming in, like traps I thought would work against this team if he set it up. We set it up, had the trap run, and he's trying to go right. We're going left. He runs it to the quarterback a little bit, and it felt like he was never able to get a good grasp on tucking the ball. He fumbles. Maybe that's not the reason, but it kind of felt like it may have been. You fumble, you give it right back, and it's like, all right, well, defense, hey, settle in. Hold him to a field goal, right? Hold him to a field goal because they'll take a field goal in a spot it feels like. Hold him there. Just hold him to a field goal, kind of halt the momentum. Defensively set up by a big scramble by Brock Purdy. They score a touchdown. So it's like, all right, offense is going to have our backs. Offense is going to bring us back to life. And to be honest, this was like the worst drive or worst series of the game for the Lions offensively because, again, this is where I can't point to, well, it's just young players make mistakes because it was also veterans. It was also guys that had playoff experience. It was a rough start for, for Sam Laporta, right? He misses a block. Chase Young gets the stop. Okay, zero yards. So second down. Contested catch, yes. It wouldn't have been easy, but he drops it over the middle field. It's like, okay, that's Sam Laporta. We trust him in those spots. He dropped it. Okay, third and ten. All of that, as bad as that start was, you got Josh Reynolds open. He's on Traverius Ward. They're going man coverage. Pass protection holds. Shout out to KO. You didn't notice a lot in this game. KO was actually pretty solid. He was pretty solid in this one. Pass protection holds. You put it on him and he drops it. And it's like, 
what the heck? Like, like someone just needed to do something. It was like young, old, I don't care who you are, just someone come through and do something big for us. Do something maybe a little bit off script. Even in this case, it wasn't even off script. It was on script. It was just like, and I wouldn't even play. bring up this punt. Like this is still an opportunity to make a big splash, game changing play. You down him at the one yard line, and you can't halt your momentum. Seems like we weren't able to find the ball quick enough. It bounces at the one, and you step in the end zone. Like putting them at the one, maybe that was play. Maybe it was special teams pinning them back to set up a safety. Get and back, no, and like, okay, defensively. And honestly, though defensively we gave up points here and we went behind. We still made a pretty big stop because the drive before, it's it's the scramble that's everything up. You have a tackle for loss. Like, all right, we're going to get a stop here. It's like, nope, there goes Purdy. All right, second 11, first down gets cover four. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Then you're like, okay, defensively, man, we have to take away – the you have to take away the scramble lanes. We have to, and, and they did. They they ended up getting a stop here. Now, what's unfortunate about this? This drive probably looks completely different if on first down, if he gets a sack, you bring the blitz, you miss the sack, and what does that lead to? Not only does it lead to you don't get a negative play, but they also make a first down because you have one less defender. Uh, use check is open late on the play, picks up a first down. If he had a rough drive, not only did he miss the sack, he's beat by Kittle, but you still settled in and held him to a field goal. To me, that was still a big stop to hold them to a field goal there. And it was, hey, coverage on one of the plays on man coverage, they covered up well with safety help, they covered up well, and they were able to get what felt like a cover sack, even though you were blitzing. Multiple sacks back to back there. Ali McNeil, who I thought was incredible in this game, run defense, pass run, I thought Ali McNeil was amazing in this game, you know, from just the first initial rewatch. You still have him to a field goal, so it still felt like a win though you gave up points it felt like a win and then of course offensively it's like all right here's what we have to respond offensively and again you can question should they have taken the field goal but this is where I give a lot of credit to San Fran as we talked about at the beginning I give a lot of credit to San Fran on this fourth down because on this fourth down play this was okay we're we have a tendency to do this they have a beater for that and all of a sudden we drop in a zone and it's just not there we saw the all 22 view there was just nobody open so you tie it along with the fact that you have a kind of a blown assignment in here they get pressure and it's like okay now he's forced to run there's just nobody there. Like, there was literally nowhere to throw the football on the play. So, but also, what's tough about this possession, because, again, it's like, okay, who's going to make that big play? This felt like that big play. Jamison Williams, the ball a little bit behind him, kind of had to slow himself up a little bit, makes a ridiculous grab. And what excites me about this is Jamison has come along. Like, you can literally just point to the growth. It's so easy to identify. A guy at the end of the preseason, we're like, I don't know if he can catch the football. And then it's like, hold up. Not only is he getting more snaps, his route tree is growing, right? You're seeing him more involved in the offense consistently. He's making really tough contested grabs. Even the final touchdown, I was like, yo, he just ripped that away from the dude. He's making tough concentration grabs. You're like, yo, this is awesome. j going to be the guy to make the big play. Someone has to do it. He's going to do it. But yet, and, and again, I don't have too big of an issue with one because, one, this is still a tough grab for anybody. But, two, it's also one of those areas where if you just look at it individually – like, yeah, I think j -Mo would acknowledge, like, this is an area I need some work. And maybe some of this is reps is tracking the football. Like, we've talked about this all year long, like, just just tracking the ball. Like, if it feels like many times this year on those spots where it's like, got to find the football. He's had good examples like Tampa Bay. There's been a lot of, like, uh, he didn't seem like he knew where the ball was. And like this one, right? You, you try to get the trick play going. It's covered up pretty well, but it's still in his hands. It, it, we just can't make the play. And it felt like he was a little bit off in the timing there when you see the replay of just kind of tracking the football downfield. So you have that. You're, you're moving the ball. You try to shot play, doesn't connect. You don't come up with it. Then Goff overthrows Gibbs, so that leads you to a third down, right? Misses Gibbs out of the backfield. Then on the third and ten, you hit St. Brown, you close that gap, and again, credit to them, they had a good play. But even after all this, you're down by three, and you're just thinking to yourself, okay, someone's got to come through. That's it. We're still right here. Forget. I mean, we understand the momentum side, but it's like, yo, we're right here. Tied or not, we have to get a stop. If you make a field goal and you're tied – you still needed to stop, right? Now, I get it. Offensively, again, you know, look, we went down and scored. I understand the game plan situation, but but it is what it is. It is what it is, right? They went for it. That, you know, that's hindsight at this point. So now it's like defense do something. Do you have to get us off the field? And the opportunity was there. Again, this wasn't a youth thing. You have a third down and four. Guys, you have a third down and four. And, and the thing is, this already happened once where we don't play a spy, but when we play man coverage, we were playing rats. We were playing Alex Anzalone as the rat, the underneath zone defender that's free on the play. And usually he's helping more in coverage. But the first time around, we see Cam Sutton pass off his route, and they make a ridiculous like one-handed grab, and it was like, oh, dang, okay. So it's like, all right, make sure we plaster. Don't do that. Okay, that's fine. They plaster in the back end. And you have A. Hutchinson rushing through the right tackle, doesn't want to get out of his pass rush lanes, just misses. Now it's on Alex Anzalone. It's on Duracell. It's like, again, I trust him. He's been in these moments. This isn't a moment thing. I trust him. But his angle's just a little bit too steep. He sees Brock stepping up. He takes a steep angle. He makes a move, gets to the outside, and it's just like, dang. 
and look, I will make this point to Aaron Glenn's credit. And I say this, hey, if you didn't watch the preview slash predictions here, I know they're long. But, man, they're worth watching because I will say this. We don't hit on everything. There are things I am wrong when the game starts. But at the same time, we also do point out things to watch for. And, man, do we hit on some specific details. Like this, for example, personnel-wise, simply just not matching personnel offensively, defensively, right? Three safety sets, making sure they're not matching personnel. That's something we talked about coming into the games. Like, hey, we cannot put linebackers on backers, on running backs in this case, on third down. And the Lions did exactly that. So I know it's a little thing, but it is a little thing that Aaron Glenn did. And it's something we talked about. So it was just cool to see, though. So little things worked. But again, Alex is only just too steep, and you let him get outside. It's just like, dang, right there was your chance. You force a punt, you're down three, you feel good, and you can't. He takes off, makes up a first down. But you still have a chance, and it's Romeo Quora who can't make the tackle. Now, this would have been difficult, and I get credit to them because, schematically speaking, they went at him multiple times. The, the touchdown, they, they did a little jet sweep, went right at Romeo. They said, hey, we're going to make him. We're going to make him tackle. We're going to make him set the edge. And this is a tough matchup with multiple tight ends. He fights through it. They don't throw a play because they have been letting them play. Can't come up with the tackle. Then they punch it into the end zone. Again, another situation where if there's one thing I would have liked to see is just – Jack Campbell, I saw an example. Malcolm Rodriguez, I saw an example. Will Harris comes in in these spots because, you know, of his size and also he's very good in communication in these spots. So I understand why he comes in. But it's like, okay, the first time I get it, this time I get why you're patient because you want to make sure that it's not a play fake and they throw it. I understand that. You don't want to have a complete breakdown. That's how people score. You know, usually things aren't contested. It's usually the guy's wide open or he's just covered up. So I understand why you're patient. But, like, there was a point there was like, okay, it's a run. Dive, dive. And it's like, no, we're just kind of sitting and waiting. It's like, bro, you got to go. Like, the game's on the line. You have to get a stop here. And we give it up. I don't know. Maybe they were telling him give up the touchdown. But you give it up. And, and what's tough about this play is Malcolm Rodriguez on this play, right? You're going to see him just run into an offensive lineman. And it's like, man, what is he looking at? He's expecting the pulling offensive lineman. But Josh Pascal makes such a good play, an immediate shed. He fills a gap, gets up field, forces the running to bounce, which takes the puller out of the play. So Malcolm has a clean hit here. But he's expecting the puller. His eyes are, you know, expecting that and all of a sudden he doesn't even see the bat come through that's what it was all game we just we just could not get that big play and overall man like there was a lot of good there was a lot of players i thought lee mcneil played well i thought hutchinson was good in pass rush maybe a little bit less than run don't look at me like that pass rush tipping the ball at the line of scrimmage early i thought cam Sutton. i thought our cornerbacks played some of our best you know as a whole in the playoffs and again we know where we're good and where we're not great every team has strength and weaknesses we saw this Sam Brady has a run defense weakness we saw that we, we took advantage of it you got to be able to hide those things. Someone has to come through and make a play. Malcolm had an interception. He stepped into a big role. I thought he would when Derek Barnes went down because I thought Barnes would be a big part, but you have to be able to block shut against the team. You have to be able to pursue laterally. He stepped into a big role. Golf protected the ball. Jamison showed some great grabs, contesting, contesting strong hands grabs, right? It wasn't easy drops, even the shot play, but that's something we've seen all year, right? We've seen him have ups and downs tracking the ball. I thought we ran block really well. I thought Kale was solid in pass protection. Kirby Joseph, I thought, played well. And some of the bad, which was occasionally broken tackles, Romeo, C.D. Deuce, Alex Anceloni. You also understand against this team. Like, you get that. It's a, one of the toughest teams to tackle in space and on the season. We have a lot of missed tackles. But Josh Reynolds with the, with the crucial drops. I mean, these were very catchable drops. Sam Laporta with the tough start to the drive. The goal line run defense, right? Some of the late fills. The Jameer Gibbs fumble, which was like, okay, that might be just a young mistake or, you know, just a mistake in the moment, right? And it, and it cost you on a fumble on the play, right? You try a trap run and he fumble. If he met missing the sack, could it flip the momentum, make the big play? Then he gets beat by Kittle later on the drive. It just felt like young plays maybe left young players maybe left at times things out there if he Laporta. And the vets also still made mistakes. It was just to me, this is the game. And because it's not a series, which I'm telling you what, man, I mean, we on the road, like I, I felt so good watching this. It was like, dude, I would have bet on us in a series. This wasn't a trick play, you know, thing where it was like, yo, we got all those big plays that come through to find a way. It's just a, it's just the nature. And I understand what Dan Campbell's saying in terms of it's really hard to get here. Because you can point to the LA Rams game in the playoffs and say, man, it was really one play. Hutchinson drawing a flag, holding, backing them up, and then Cam Sutton, who had a really rough day with the pass breakup. I mean, you don't get that hold. They may kick a field goal and take the lead. That game might be completely different. Maybe not. But, I mean, it was that close. Games in the playoffs, just look at the Baltimore-Kansas City game. It come down to, like, one or two plays. And it just, to me, it wasn't a youth thing. It wasn't a lack of experience. It wasn't a coaching decision. We just couldn't come through with one big play that we needed. We just it just know anybody. We just could not get that one big play to flip momentum in the second half, give us something that was maybe not drawn up, just something that was just a little bit extra and beyond. I thought the game plan was good. I thought the coaching was good. I thought the players did a lot of things well. They didn't consistently beat themselves. Obviously, they had some mistakes. They had mistakes. The fumble was bad, you know, but they turned it over too. And part of that was the game plan. Like, this is where we want Brock Purdy. We did a great job putting them there. 
But at the same time, it was we just needed one big play in the second half, and we just could not get it. And that is the biggest takeaway for me in this one. So it is a very tough way to end the season. Because overall, I feel great about the future. I really do. We have a lot of core pieces. Man, Gibbs was special in this game. Outside the fumble, he was awesome. We got a lot of great core pieces, man. We have a lot of guys that are going to be your part of the future. We have a good quarterback, man. We have a guy that played well, I thought, in this same journey. He didn't hit every throw, but he didn't make the big mistake. You know, he, he protected the football. He also made some big throws. The one to St. Brown before half was like, yo, that was nasty. Made some big play. He played more than well enough to win this football game. We just needed somewhere, somebody, whoever, just need to make a big play, and we just could not get one of those big plays. And unfortunately, in a lot of our wins this year, we've been able. Offense, defense, especially somebody somewhere has come through. And in this case, we just couldn't get anything that was extra and beyond. And I think it's very easy to kind of encapsulate what happened in this game just by looking at a first half, an example like this. This St. Brown drop. You know he's going to be contested over the middle, and he doesn't come up with it. And we had that in the second half. The difference was the very next play, you go back to St. Brown underneath, and he makes a guy miss, slides through two defenders, and gets a first down. We just had a way to respond. That one two-play sequence was the example of a response. And then the second half, you just didn't have that response where you punched it back. And that, that's what made it so difficult, whether it was Jamison stumbling and making a great run, Gibbs' ridiculous touchdown. I mean, defensively, some of the key stops that we had, and just it felt like in the second half we couldn't get that kind of bounce-back play that we needed, right? You'd have a successful first down. It's like, yes, TFL. And then the second down would be bad. We lost. So I hate that it's off to the draft right now, but that's where we're at. It's tough. Obviously, the future's bright. I feel that way. It's tough because it's a one-game format in the playoffs, but that's really the challenge. Get back into the playoffs. Challenge is you're in one of the best divisions, I think, in football, and I think we saw that this year. This is a very good division. It's not going to get easier. But at the same time, I'm very optimistic for the future. It's just tough that it ends this way because not only did the Lions show that they belonged, to me they showed that they were the better team. Say whatever you want with that. I understand how the result was. I just believe that the things that I thought would work worked to – not only to how I thought they would, but beyond how I thought they may have may would may, may have worked in this game. To me, the man, the Lions not only proved that they belong here, but they proved more than that. They proved they were capable of winning this darn Super Bowl, and that's what makes this so difficult. So, yeah, it's a tough one. We're gonna leave it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, Pat, for watching. We'll be back for more in the week, but it's off to the off season. Bet US America's favorite sports book, where you can bet on everything, anytime. Sportsbook, casino, horse racing, live betting, and more. We have the best bonuses in the industry. That's right, get a 125% sign-up bonus. And to celebrate our 30-year anniversary, we are giving up to 30 risk-free bets, a truck, Super Bowl tickets, and more. Don't miss out. Play smart. Join now. BetUS, where the game begins.